Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher Circus. Today we have a very special set of matches coming up against Awesome Pork, one of my greatest supporters, and it looks like we get to go first, which is really good, and Awesome Pork is actually using a Vestal. So the idea behind this match that we're going for was that I play a stereotypical Mark team, you know, one of the strongest Mark teams that you could uh, bring. I'm gonna play WD and then I'm gonna play Hit Squad, and Awesome Pork is gonna try beating me through having like a very uh, heavy duty protection team. And I'm gonna have to say it's not going too well so far because I did get to go first, and since I have WD, I can actually just go for a slam and prevent that uh, Crusader from using his Mark of Light, at least for a while. Now, my Crusader isn't going to have too much of a fun time against this plus 15 dot shenanigans, but that's just something I'm going to have to deal with here. I was thinking of going for a Mark, but uh, there is a support Arbalest there in the back, which is very, very annoying. I could also pull her, but um, I have to think on what I want to do. I'm going to go for a pull on her, because I think if I mark someone, she's just going to flare, and it wouldn't uh, be too great for me, and if I pull her, it would be quite nice, but oh well. I guess she's just uh, gonna resist that move because of that exotic snuff, which is quite likely the exotic snuff is a nice trinket. She's still gonna flare, which is surprising if you ask me. Now I have to go for a stun now. I'm gonna go for a stun on the Vestal. We do fortunately hit, that's why it's being a 70% hit chance. So really nice that we managed to take out that Vestal's action, because with her action out, my action stays in, <laughs> which is good, because she does always have that dazzling light, right? And the Holy Lance does fortunately miss, so I'm gonna have to say this is looking like a really nice match for us so far. I think focusing down the Vestal is the smartest thing to do here. Sadly, we only do 15, so even if we go first now and shoot her, we might not do enough damage. And even with that, she still has a lot of healing potential, so we are in a little bit of a rough spot. I'm gonna go for another slam on this Crusader because I don't want Plark of Light slash Cellus. I think those are way more annoying than what Holy Lance could possibly achieve to be against my team. So we're gonna put the Vessel also in a position where she doesn't want to be. So she's gonna go for a stun. I would go for a stun on the Crusader, and yep, there is the stun on our little Crusader, so I can say goodbye to my action. That's the first offense coming my way, so that's pretty good. And it's um, only the first blow that reaches us, and right now I think um, maybe a pass is in order. Um, going for a shot doesn't really accomplish much for us at the moment, so I think I'm just going to pass here. Yeah, I'm going to pass on my turn and let uh, Awesome Pork um, do something for, for the meanwhile. He's actually going to go command, I'm so surprised. I think just spamming Bellow here is an awesome play because, <laughs> you know, it's Bellow against WD, it's awesome. You, you just can't go wrong with it. I'm a little bit surprised that's not what he's doing right now. I would just go Bellow round 1, Bellow round 2. Absolutely. He just, he went bolster? Wow, that, that is a little bit surprising. We do fail the second pull, which is getting annoying. It's a 45% chance, so I would hope to get one out of two, but he's still gonna go for the flare, which is surprising. Right now, we have a really good opportunity to drop this vessel down to zero. There's no battle debuffs on, on us. This 15% protection doesn't do anything, because we do have the piercing quarrel with the 20% armor piercing, so now there's gonna have to be a heal. But after this heal, Things aren't looking too good for um, no, for Awesome Pork. That heal for 6 might actually change to the stuff, because now I can't go for uh, a stun with uh, Abomination. A stun with the Abomination definitely wouldn't, probably wouldn't have dealt 6 damage against the 15% prot uh, that the Vestal has. If I did have both stun, tri both, uh, stun trinkets on this Abomination, probably would have dealt that. Spike chains plus 20% damage range skills, but yeah. Now there's going to be a Defender, that's... Uh, that's a very weird play, uh, to say the least, because I have uh, both Rake, I have Slam, I'm gonna go for Slam here, and after the Slam, I mean, there's extra death flow resistance, but uh, now the Arbals is in position too, and with the Arbals in position too, that means I still have another very good kill shot, and now you only have one more healer, which is the Crusader. Which sucks for you, to, to say the least. Yeah, I think Awesome Pork really isn't playing this as well as he could be. I think he's been doing a couple misplays, so... We might have to retry this match because the Vessel is uh, very likely to die right now and the Arbalus cannot heal. So yeah, that's kind of the problem of going for a guard with the Crusader, especially with, uh, I mean, with the Mana Arm, especially with these trinkets, is that this Mana Arm should be Battle Round 1, Battle Round 2, Battle Round 3. Like 100%. I'd be at minus 60% damage right now. I would uh, be having an awesome time. 
I'm gonna go for, uh, there's pull and there's caltrips. Caltrips can do zero damage. I'm gonna go for pull, which sadly doesn't get the death blow, which means that this match is gonna be prolonged by a little bit, because we failed both death blows, so... You know, that, that does suck quite a bit. But uh, she's gonna have to go for a heal now, and after that heal, we are gonna have to stun her again, and then just repeat this whole process, I, I suppose. So yeah, we're gonna go for another stun, and right back down to zero you go, and now I have to use my offensive actions to kind of just beat uh, Austin Pork's heals, which shouldn't be too difficult to do. If he goes for another card, I'll just slam again, I really don't care. So yeah, there's gonna be a rally to the flame now, and uh, here it gets a little tricky. It does get a little tricky here. I'm thinking of, yeah, because the guard break debuff was removed. I'm just gonna go for a slam, uh, because it's gonna prevent the Arbalist heal, and it's gonna prevent the Men at Arms guard. It's gonna make it so it's a little bit more difficult for me to get the death blow, but with the extra death blow chance I get from the minus death blow resistance, it should be pretty easy to get the kill anyway. You can't guard, you can't uh, go for a heal with Battlefield Bandage, so overall we're doing rather good. Even if the Arbalest has snuff and I can't pull her, I can still push the characters in front of her, so... Uh, in the end, it uh, works out rather well for me, I'm, I'm gonna have to say. So yeah, good save by Awesome Pork, trying to go for Flare and then just healing with the Vestal, but it's, it's not going to be quite enough. No no one you're playing against LVD, I don't think. So now there's going to be the Bellow, and um, oh, I do want to get a kill with Caltrips. I do quite want to get a kill with Caltrips. I'm going to go for it, yeah. Because there's still no heal, right? I'm gonna go for it. So 72, did I get? No, I dealt zero damage. <laughs> of course I dealt zero damage. Well, you know, there's always a chance you do zero, but I was really hoping that would work. Right now, Awesome Pork has to uh, either flare or... Yeah, he's gonna flare. Oh, I might have just thrown the match on that. I might have just thrown the match on that. Come on, Arbles, don't let me down. Oh, the Arbles let me down like crazy. Okay, the Vestal is gonna be, is gonna stay alive. We're we're throwing for content, right? <laughs> we're throwing for content. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna stay alive, and now she's gonna heal herself. But it's still not a not a bad position for us, you know. It's just um, a little bit a little bit unfortunate, just a touch unfortunate. So we're gonna go for a stun on the Arbles to resist this, right? She's in position two now, so that's rather good for us. The other characters are bleeding, which is good. And uh, the Vestal isn't going to go down anytime soon anymore, but it's not the end of the world. There's going to be another bell, so yeah, now now Awesomeberg's doing the, the right stuff. If he did that from the start, this would be much, much better for him, but oh well. I'm going to click here, I'm going to go for a stall on the Crusader. I think there's nothing wrong with that, so let's just go for a nice stall on him, remove his action, prevent Holy Lands, prevent heals, and you could typically... He uh, Cure stuns with uh, Flare, but if your Arbalest is stunned, then yeah, you can't Flare. So now the Vestal, what is she gonna do? She's gonna go for the stun herself. Uh, this is a problem with running Vestal and Bellow debuffs, is that, you know, you have two Bellow debuffs and there's and a stun. What do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna Flare it all away. This is kind of why Strength Vestal has completely fallen out of the meta, no one even plays her anymore today. Because with Bell debuffs and stuns, if there's an Arbos, which there very likely will be, <laughs> you're not having a good time. So I could go for finishing here, it would do some damage. Uh, 8 to 15 really isn't very much though. Yeah, it really isn't very much. I think doing some damage to this Arbos would be preferable. Or I could go for a mark and then just shoot her immediately. I could also do that. I could also go for a pull on the vessel, but I think keeping the Arbos in position 2 here is... Uh, is the best thing we could go for, so we're just gonna do that, and we're gonna shoot her by the start of next round, and bring her down to zero, which will be rather nice seeing that happen, so let's do exactly that. And we don't actually bring her down to zero because we get a mineral on our sniper shot. Good job, Arbalist, not getting the crit. Our Arbalist really hasn't been doing very much, has she? I don't think so. I think it's the rest of the team that's kind of just working awesome pork here, not my Arbalist. Okay, that's gonna be a Dazzling Light, which is annoying, to say the least. I can't flare it away this time. And, um, what do I want to go for here? What do I want to do? Transform Rake might be an idea, just to drop her down to zero. Yeah, I do have a damage buff on me, and with the Transform I'm gonna have another damage buff. So Rake here is possibly gonna do enough damage. So yeah, with the with the bleed from Caltrips, she's dropping down to zero, so that's pretty good for us. Actually, that Vestal is getting close to afflicted. I'm doing more stress than Awesome Pork is doing. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. 
Uh, I'm just gonna pass the, the stun here with the Crusader, and the um, enemy Crusader is gonna have to heal or else the Arbalist dies, so that's gonna be what uh, Awesome Pork is gonna do. But after the Crusader heals, I will uh, just hit the Arbalist, and then she will die by the start of next round, so we are totally, totally chill here. Uh, actually, I do not have my action just yet, so yeah, he doesn't actually have to go for a heal, he can just do that. But now, third time's the charm, right? We're gonna go for the pull, and there we go, voila! Third time's the charm, and this is gonna be a wham-bam thank you ma'am on this Arbles, because right now, even if you somehow manage to move back to position 4 by a bug of the game, I still have minus 30% death blow res on you. So I can just get the death blow very, very reliably on her, so even with me uh, misplaying horribly by not killing that Vestal, <laughs> we're still gonna take the Arbalus. I know you can finally get your Blark of Light off around 7, good job. <laughs> you can finally get Blark of Light if you if you want to do it now. So yeah, maybe there's an argument in going for Glorious Standard with this Crusader, you know, oh, I mean Glorious Banner with this Crusader, just so you get more move resistance, you know, maybe Glorious Banner Pit Fighter's Helm, that's gonna really hinder your offense, but you know, it's not the, ter not the terriblest of ideas, I suppose. I'm gonna de-transform here, go piece of, oh, Fearful's Path, that means Manacles is never gonna do 6 damage. Well, maybe if I get a crit on it, nah, we only do three. Well, that kind of sucks. I was hoping for a big damage affliction, or at least like a 0% damage modifier, because then the vessel would have dropped down to zero, but yeah. Now there's gonna be a Bella, so say goodbye to a lot of my damage, but it's still not, uh, not the end of the world. I could go for a Flare here, but um, the Flare doesn't really benefit me too much. So instead, I'm gonna drop a sniper shot immediately, and why is that? Why am I not going last? Well, I do enough damage either way, and I want her to take extra extra stress from the horror. And after that, I'm just gonna drop a stun on the Crusader, and your actions are gonna be locked down pretty nicely. She got a crit last round, which means she could get a pretty big heal, but thankfully we stunned her, so no big heals for you. And now we are just gonna go for a stun on the enemy Crusader, and that's one third of your actions gone with this stun. Uh, I don't think the bolster is really paying off, I guess it's paying off against the stress, and the dodge could help, but it's not really helping. I'm not missing a lot of these 85s, so I have to be grateful for that. Not a lot of stress being taken, but still a little bit. She's almost afflicted. She's going to heal for 14. I can do 14, but I have to get a little bit lucky to, to actually do that. Yeah, just a touch lucky. Uh, would be nice if I did do 14, wouldn't it? I could go for a stun there. Ah, with that protection, it gets a little bit tricky. Ah, you know what? Let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. Let's clear that damage uh, debuff. Uh, the better arm's gonna go for another bellow, that's for sure. But even after going for that bellow, I don't think it's the end of the world for me. So he's gonna reduce the damage again, I think, with, uh, with the bellow. And now I could still do enough damage. Uh, sadly, my abomination is dazed, so I don't really have um, all the bells and whistles to just kill the best. <laughs> I do 8 to 14, yeah, I don't do enough damage here, sadly. I wish I did. With a crit, it would have definitely been enough, but oh well. I'm just gonna pull the vessel now, and then I'm gonna stun her, most likely. And with the Crusader in that position, yeah, he's not gonna have a good time. But I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna stun her with the manacle, she's definitely gonna take enough to go down to this star. And I could have killed her with finish him. Wow, manacles doing one damage. I could have killed her with finish him and now the manacles, but I think this is just a little bit more reliable. And putting in her, putting her in position one and putting the crusade in position three with the vessel stunned it just feels pretty darn good here. Even if you go for a guard, I still have slam. Keep that in mind. I do still have my my nasty slam. So yeah, there's the guard. <laughs> Why do you keep guarding? I still have slam. Are you hoping for a fearful pass? Oh wait, I don't have slam. Whoops, I forgot, I already transformed twice. Well, you know, who cares, I, I pass anyway. I'm just gonna stun. It's a 70% chance, I'm quite likely to get it. Though, even after I get it, now that I don't have my Abomination action, the Crusader can just go for a heal, and the Vestal will stay alive. But she's in a terrible spot. The Mender Arms just lost two actions, the Crusader is gonna lose his action, and my Arbalist is gonna do some damage to whoever he wants, and that's... Uh, to whoever she wants, and that's very good. So I could go for finish him here, but that's um, not very necessary. 
I'm gonna go for a sniper shot on the Crusader because he doesn't have 80 prods. <laughs> 80 prod is a little bit difficult to deal with, even for an Arbalist. So yeah, let's go for the sniper shot now. And 11 to 20, not too shabby with crit for 26. So 55% protection doesn't really feel like 55% protection once you do have this very, very nice setup and the marks. So yeah, not too easy to deal with this protection. I mean, it's round 10, but finally we're getting the afflictions to come in clutch for us as well. Oh, can you believe it? I'm gonna... do you think Manacles is 3 damage? I, I genuinely don't think so. But Manacles will stun the Crusader, so it will make it so you do not have your heal. And after that, I can just go Stunning Blow for 3, finish him, you're gone. Sniper Shot, uh, Crusader is a goner, and this is gonna be absolutely GG, so... Park did go down, kicking and screaming, but I, he is gonna go down here for sure. With the Vestal gone, I mean, I only have one affliction on me. Crusader could literally still go virtuous. He could he could just go courageous and win this 1v3 pretty much. So yeah, this is uh, this doesn't look too good. One thing I could also do, which makes even more sense, is to go sniper shot here and just kill the Crusader. Uh, because the Crusader is a little bit more dangerous than the Vestal, you know, she's in position 1, who cares. Of course, the Vestal could be saved after that by uh, another guard, but you know what happens to guards? They get stunned away, <laughs> because Crusader with double stun check, it's, it's awesome. So even if you go for a guard right now, which I think Awesome Pork is going to do, yeah, he's going to go for the guard, aren't you? Uh, or is it going to be a Velo? No, it's just going to be a Velo, it's just going to be sacrificing the Vestal. Well, don't mind if I do then. I am going to kill her. I'm actually not going to kill her with... Uh, Oh, that's nasty. I do go virtuous. I go vigorous right now. I'm not going to kill her with um, uh, with the Bounty Hunter, because I do want to have that Bounty Hunter action for the mark. So, yeah, I also approach Surrender, so let's go on for a match number two with Hit Squad and see how this goes. All right, here we go. On to a match number two, and it looks like we got something radically different from Awesome Park here. So this time we got a... The hell is this? We got a, a stress slipper, that's for sure. He still got a stress crusader, though this time he has battle scarred helm instead of pit fighters. I guess he needed the pit fighters for, for the other characters. We have a stress chester, so that's pretty fun to see. And we have an occultist with gladiator helm and the fleshbound grimoire. So interesting setup by my opponent here, that's for sure. I'm gonna go for a pull on the occultist, and also Pork says, Grr, ship first again. Yeah, that's a little bit annoying for you when you're trying to play a team like this. I am gonna... Oh, I'm gonna desync. Okay then, I guess you get to maybe go first next time. Alright, and here we go again, and let's see, do I get to go first? Oh, I don't. Alright, so we already have a different uh, outcome to this match, potentially, because the Crusader does get to go block of flight, if he wants to, of course. So, since he went first, he's not gonna get pushed, he's not gonna get stunned, he's not gonna get uh, uh, a character pulled behind him, I mean, at least not immediately, which means that you do get the protection, which is quite nice for you. Now, one thing I could go for, which... Um, Will I do? Um, I'm thinking of pulling the Jester, but do I really want to pull the Jester here? <laughs> a part of me wants to, and a part, another part of me really doesn't want to. A, a part of me really wants to kill this Occultist, because once the Occultist is gone, I can relatively deal with these three guys. I can deal with these three relatively well. But while the Occultist is here, it's going to be a lot more difficult. I'm surprised by the Weakening Curse, as opposed to... Uh, just uh, just a pull, because I think a pull might have been a little bit smarter there, but there is a weakening curse rather than a pull, which is indeed surprising. I don't think a sniper shot is going to deal 30 damage, uh, 33 damage, even with a crit right now, not against 30% protection with the damage debuff. It would be close, but I don't think it's uh, quite enough. So I'm going to start off with a nice punish on this leopard, just to start taking away at him. Thankfully I can't miss, I can't fail the bleed, so overall we're going to pretty much destroy the sniper over the next few rounds. And he can't really destroy his back because he doesn't have chop and revenge, he doesn't have any setup like that, he just has a lot of protection, a lot of uh, tankiness. So I guess there's going to be an intimidate. Um, that means that what I'm going to do here is either I go for a stunning blow or I go for a heal. 
So Alsonborg says no damage, and I say, no, I have Rally to the Flame, I can clear your debuffs. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm just gonna go sniper shot by Sarm next round. I have a feeling Alsonborg is gonna go solo here. <laughs> Return of damage, he says. Yeah, I have a feeling he's gonna go solo, but no, he's gonna go battle battle. That does put the occultist in a little bit of a dangerous position, but yeah. I can go for the sniper shot right now, and I do get a very nasty crit. So with without, uh, I mean, with the minus 50% damage, there's no way I would have dealt that amount. With minus 50%, you're probably doing uh, not half of that. That's not how it works, but you would be doing uh, quite a lot less. So there is plus healing skills, which means that he does get to heal for quite a bit. That is quite annoying, but uh, it's just something that we're gonna have to deal with. I think I'm gonna go for. Uh, I could stun immediately, or I could just wait for the Crusader and then stun him. I'm gonna go for the smarter play, which is just to punish the Leper. I think you, you really can't go wrong with punishing the Leper right here. Just keep ticking away at his HP and eventually he's gonna crumble, because this time there's no support Arbalist, right? Uh, Austin Park knew exactly what he was gonna go up against, so he, he has no excuse for not being ready against the bleeds. Yeah, he's gonna go for another Intimidate, just to reduce my damage further. I could go for a Mark here. I will probably do enough damage with the mark. I have like basic, like just base damage, and hopeless does not reduce your damage, so that's pretty darn good. So yeah, I think I will in fact go for um, probably a mark on the occultist. He can still do some shenanigans by the start of next round because he will stay alive, right? We also go for a mark on him, but then there's just going to be solo, so I'm going to drop a mark on the Occultist. We do actually get the debuff, which is huge. It's absolutely huge how we do actually get it. It's only a 30% chance of getting the debuff, but the fact that we do means that the Occultist is now a lot more susceptible to dying to, like, a come hither or to something else like that. So there's going to be a solo first, which is a little bit surprising, um, but I, there isn't, there's some things I could do about it, but not a whole lot. Uh, I think I'm just going to stun the Leper here, I think that's really the best thing I can do. Just going to go for a stun on him, the crit is really nice, because now my stun chance goes to an 80%, that's right. 80% stun chance against an exotic snuff Leper, <laughs> it's, it's outrageous what the, what the Crusader can actually do. And we do clear our, our own stress with the, with, the, with the crit, so that's nice. I don't think that Rally to the Flame is quite smart, because I have basic Arbalest damage. Um, only if I min roll or get like a very low roll do I not kill your occultist, but wow, I guess it paid off. Uh, it paid off immensely to go for that Rally to the Flame, even if it was objectively bad play to, to go for it. But oh well, what can I do? I think there's going to be a Demon's Pull here, very likely to pull because I have um, reduced resistances, but right now I can go for a Holy Lance, and let's see, 75% hit chance. Oh, we don't take it. We don't quite take it, which kind of sucks, but um, let's see what my opponent wants to do. Is there, is there, is there just going to be a click with the Leper? I think there is. There's just going to be a, a little click with the Leper. I'm not sure if my Arbalist does enough damage. I have minus 33, and he's going to have 5 HP, which isn't too much. He wants to go for a finale. He's, he's thinking about it, but no, he's going to go rally to the flame. I think that's a misplay because now I can actually go for the punish, and you're going to be in a really rough spot with this uh, with this sniper. Not to mention that your um, not to mention that your occultist is now also in a really rough spot because oh he doesn't have the debuff anymore because the crusader healed him. That's right. But I could still just shoot and go for a come hither death blow or a, or a caltrops death blow. I'm actually going to go for a double caltrops death blow. Actually, I'm going to get neither because there's protection <laughs> if I. Find I do decide to go for that. Uh, what I am instead going to do here is I'm just going to click and I'm going to go for the... Oh, well, it's, it's rather nice, ain't it? Yeah, that, that is rather nice, but the hopeless minus 5 accuracy makes it so I miss the, the occultist. Okay, so I get lucky because of hopeless and then I get unlucky because of hopeless. But I will still kill the Leper, so yeah, he's dropping down to zero, and now the Leper is 100% gone. We do get the crit with it, which is a blessing and a curse, but I think it's more of a blessing than a curse, because now the Occultist is also in harm's way for our punishes and our stuns, and this isn't looking too good for our support, because even if you finale the Arbals, like, soon, uh, you don't have a confirmed kill on the Arbals just yet, but even if you finale the Arbals soon, uh, stuff isn't awesome for you. Misclick, what did you, what did you want to do? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna ask him, what did you want to do? What did you want 
do do? Did you want to finale the bounty hunter? You need a crit for that. And a point of meaty crit. I don't think you could do 38 with that, yeah. Not with three buffs. You can't do 38 with three buffs. Occultist pull. Oh, you wanted to go for an occultist pull. Well, not today, I guess. <laughs> because you're getting stunned. <laughs> you're not going to go for an occultist pull anymore. Your occultist is gone. Even if there was an occultist pull on the Arbos, I could just move back. So that wouldn't really change everything. So after I moved back, there could probably be enough damage for the finale here. So yeah, you do 14 to 25 with um, with three buffs and with uh, plus 16% crit chance, actually very likely to get it. So there's going to be a Holy Lance crit there, which is definitely annoying. But now there is a confirmed death blow onto that occultist, and the only reach that uh, this Chester actually or any character actually has to my uh, Arbalest is with finale which means that I do not have to go reclaim here. I genuinely don't have to reclaim, because the only reach there is, is through Finale. So yeah, I'm gonna go for a Punish on the Crusader. I go for the 50-50 Bleed. Sadly, it doesn't pay off. And now with this uh, Hopeless Arbalist, I'm just gonna go for a Sniper Shot, which does five damage. <laughs> That's definitely not very much, but I'd rather just keep right at door and uh, just wait for the finale because that's the only reach that also awesome pork actually has to my backline now and uh, that's very good so it's going to be the finale death blow right there which is um minus one arbalist i suppose but we still have three very very healthy characters one of them being a crusader and one of them being <laughs> flatulent and one of them being a bounty hunter which is the confirmed death blow character right so no awesome fork says not going to win this anyway and uh, i will have to agree this isn't looking too good for you i'm gonna drop a punish on the crusader so that is very likely gonna get the bleed at last he is gonna bleed quite a lot the spiked bat is coming in very clutch getting those confirmed bleeds getting those very very likely bleeds and now i was hoping for a little bit more damage because of the days so i'm surprised by how little it is so instead i'm just gonna drop a caltrops here which is gonna bleed both characters and it's just gonna add to the pain that we're outputting to this crusader so yeah hit squad can you deal with hit squad with protection not really i mean there wasn't even a man at arms here so this was a little bit of a troll team by by awesome pork i'm gonna have to say just trolling just a little bit i think and yeah keep in mind i still have a virtue chance if you if you think mark teams are balanced keep in mind that not only are you you know, totally indecisively winning the match, even if you're losing, you can still get a Virtue with a 30% chance and then just start winning again. It's, it really is outrageous. But it's gonna be a solo right now. You know what I want to go for? I want to go for a little bit of a funny. I'm gonna go for... The, this is definitely not the correct play, I should just focus down the Crusader, but I'm gonna go for a stun, and now there's stun and day, so I should be able to do some decent damage. 8 to 19, yeah, we do 17. I would do more damage if there wasn't fully with protection, but yeah, we do do some decent damage with that uh, Crusader. Yeah, just going for, I mean, to the gesture, just going for a solid Crusader, finish him on the Crusader would be a lot smarter than that. Like, obviously, he has 5 dodge, he still can't resist the stun even with his 5 dodge. And wow, look at that double crit heal. Okay, I see how it is. That's gonna make it a little bit more difficult for me to get the death blows, but it's uh, it's not gonna change a lot and <laughs> it's not gonna change a lot in the whole grand scheme if you're looking at the big picture here it's not gonna do too much of a difference because the jester is still gonna go down very soon i'm just gonna stun the crusader finish him on the crusader jester is dead by the start of next round and overall hit squad takes the w i will have to say so let's just um i don't think there's any point skipping along to the end because i mean we're like a couple actions away from just getting the the end here and we only do seven damage even with the stun yeah protection is very difficult for the bounty hunter to deal with it would be nice if he had the trinket to actually get rid of some of that protection because he has a very decent damage trinket it's called the heart seeker the heart seeker makes him do uh, what is it? it makes him do plus 25 percent damage melee skills and also plus 10 percent death load chance like 25 percent damage is a lot it's nothing to scoff at but not having any sort of armor piercing for him and having only 90 accuracy base makes him not really see any kind of use as the damage dealer of a team you basically see him be kind of a support for the armables and sometimes he will do damage when he has finish him synergy and uh, never collect bounty for synergy. That's really, really rare to see a team making use of collect bounty. So now we can just slowly whittle away at this Jester and he will eventually be gone, even with his uh, 30 dodge and all his Jester shenanigans just trying to stay alive here. Yeah, I mean, this setup definitely makes uh, his survivability a lot bigger, 
especially if you still had the extra 25 dodge. He's a very difficult character to punch through this chest when he does have Pit Fighter's Helmet Monkey's Bar. But it is uh, still going to be not too, not too hard for us to take him out, I'm going to have to say, yeah. Especially when you have finisher and uh, and the finisher on this bounty hunter grappling mitts, the gesture is just gonna go down very soon. Awesome, but please just stop delaying this. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to give your gesture righteous death, and there we go. So GG Stoss and Pork. Hope you all enjoy the match. I think there's more matches that are a little bit more indicative of what a full mark versus full prot actually is. If you go look at my playlists, not a lot of people know this, but I th I have a lot of playlists and I put every single team that I use in every single one of those, those playlists. So if you want to watch matches with WD, you just go on the playlist, you write down WD and you search and there's like, you know, like 10 videos with WD. Uh, so you can watch that. And what you're going to be looking for is a team called the Twin Bosses. It's a very nice team, very nice team that has Flagellant, Crusader, Men at Arms, Chester, or Chester Men at Arms. Or is it Men at Arms at the end? I, I can't actually remember, but it has Flagellant, Crusader, and it has a Jester, so it's kind of like the twin bosses, the Flagellant and the Jester, and it's a very good anti-mark team, and you should have a look at those matches if you do want to see some very nice, full heavy protection team. So, anyway, hope you all enjoyed the matches, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.